uh, power electronics, uh, tidal power, and actually in-river uh, systems as well. Alberta, not surprisingly enough, looking at energy efficiency and improvements around uh, the production of fossil fuels, but also in carbon capture and storage. Uh, in the Prairie Provinces, uh, a lot of agriculture is uh, the basis for their economy. And so what we're looking for are different kinds of technologies to produce biofuels or different co-products from these different substrates or feedstocks, uh, but also to increase the value add for that farming so it becomes more sustainable both environmentally and economically. In Ontario, lots of people wasting too much energy, so not surprisingly, there's a big focus on energy-efficient technologies, and in particular, power storage and solar. Quebec has a great strength in sort of the biotech area, amongst others, and uh, they've shown leadership in the waste-to-energy technologies and also providing ways of remote communities being able to operate in a more sustainable fashion. And for Atlantic Canada, they have a mix of a different, several different kinds, but tidal power and ethanol production are amongst them. So you can see that if you look at the capacity of California and also of Canada, great IP being created. But if it's just created and sits there, it doesn't benefit society and it doesn't benefit uh, any of you that create those ideas. So I want to talk a little bit about financing. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there's a representation of uh, the movement of technologies from concept to market. You essentially have about $21 billion in Canada that's focused on the upstream or research and development side. And then the private sector takes a rather a small role at an order of magnitude less, about $2 billion. Uh, there's obviously a disconnect there. But... Um, the other point around this is that there isn't much funding when you take something out of the lab and you want to be able to prove its performance in real-world situations and then move it across to the private sector investors. And we uh, at SDTC call it the pre-commercial gap. Some people tend to call it affectionately the valley of death, um, which is a, a real loss of that power of IP that's been created and uh, not getting to market. So the SD Tech Fund is intended to finance and bridge that gap. And so I'll just put in a little plug right now, which is to say if a number of you have initiatives with your colleagues uh, across the border, then don't forget that there are plenty of mechanisms uh, both within the federal government to finance uh, advanced research and likewise with SDTC when you're looking to move it out to market. So uh, there's a line of sight to, uh, to financing and success. We have placed uh, over $340 million of uh, SDTC's money and then leveraged it with over $800 million in the private sector. So our um, you know, $1.14 billion is a really interesting fund. 80% of that money comes from industry, the private sector, and I think it's very encouraging. So as an indication of this go uh, Canada's government's commitment to clean technology, you can see that with their support, the $550 million that we have in our ST Tech Fund, that we expect to move between $1.6 and $2.2 billion into the marketplace. But I think we better get a bit of a context here. Uh, and I thought you'd find this an interesting slide because it essentially compares the amount of funding um, in the venture area, uh, both between Canada, California, and Western Europe. And uh, it's for every year except the first two quarters only of 2008. And uh, clearly California outstrips everybody. So although Canada and California have roughly the same uh, population size, uh, we're not putting in the kind of money that we need to to match this. But interestingly enough, even on global statistics, California way exceeds everybody else in its adoption and enthusiasm for clean technologies. So um, having financed them, uh, the importance of financing is critical, but also the importance of um, market success and partnerships to bring that about is my um, final point. So if you look at um, Canada and California, we have great opportunity for early stage collaboration. And I'm just going to mention two of the areas, well, three actually, sustainable biofuels, carbon capture and sequestration, and also uh, smart grids. 
Uh, you've seen um, uh, announcements uh, from the governor uh, of California with a commitment with their um, uh, biomass for about 2,500 megawatts of new biomass power as part of the renewable um, act that is in place. You're seeing uh, the West Coast Regional Carbon Sequestration Partnership, that's seven states and one province, they're looking to find ways to capture carbon and take industrial wastes and put them underground. The IEA working on uh, carbon capture and sequestration at Weyburn. So you've got a number of initiatives that are driving forward. On the Canadian side, Environment Canada is responsible for putting together the government's plan on turning the corner, which takes a, a really key position that technology underpins much of that policy work. On top of that, you have commitments to uh, carbon capture and sequestration through um, projects being funded out of Natural Resources Canada, some $230 million out of the ECO-ETI program. Uh, SDTC also has a $500 million next-gen biofuels program to encourage not the food source but the progression from food to non-fuel sources of feedstocks for improved environmental performance of ethanol production and actually also biodiesel. The policy driving that in Canada is not dissimilar to the policy in the U.S., so you're looking at about 5% of bioethanol by 2010, and then for Canada, it's 2% biodiesel for both heating and transportation applications by 2012. So you do have some, some good policy drivers. However, um, I think what we really have is some stronger messages here from the Californian side, and I think... Uh, Paul Gregorian has been um, a key driver in ensuring that there is legislation and policy around reduction of, of plastics usage and also in expansion of the solar industry in California. Uh, and on top of that, we have some additional ones that are really pushing forward on the policy side. So I think if I was to take a market where we want to take our clean technologies from Canada, and we have lots of them, California is a great market for that. So I thank you for pushing them, the market forward. Um, there's been a, a substantive study of the Climate Action Team out of California have picked 11 areas of emphasis, and I'm delighted to say that eight of those are technology-oriented. And if we look at those, I uh, am also pleased to say that if you look at our annual report supplement, you will find descriptions of technologies that can actually respond to all of these needs. Now, we have more than one technology per area, and um, I know that I can't go on a great length, but suffice it to say that if you look at these technologies, they're different companies with different, different capabilities, they are part of the enabling for the policy drive to ensure that rather than people feeling guilty about not being able to take action, that they can do so. Uh, so we really do have a strong connectivity between policy driving and the delivery of that action through technologies. So if I'm to conclude, what I would say is, is that we... Uh, I see certainly global leadership in Canada and California around clean tech IP development. Uh, financing is really important, and frankly, California leads the way in that area, so maybe we can get an angle on some of your financing. Um, and I would say for, in terms of collaboration, and we've seen some of those discussions today and we'll see them this afternoon, is that we want to see uh, the early technology development coalesce together so that it can be uh, brought forward to reach the markets and see some consistency in adoption of progressive policy to drive those technologies to market, which is when all of us will see cleaner air, cleaner land and cleaner water. So I uh, encourage you to continue on your collaborations and hope that we will be successful because if we're not, the consequences are dire. Thank you.